to learn with my mentor. Um, Jen is an outstanding role model for me as a researcher, clinician, and mentor. Uh, her serious attitude and uh, contribution to uh, clinical medicine and academic science have been uh, continuously positively impacting my way in medicine and helping me to succeed um, in this field. Jen, I really uh, appreciate all your support for me. Hi, my name is Dr. Brian Lee and I'm a pediatric infectious disease physician at Children's Hospital Oakland. My mentor is Dr. Parva Nazimi. She is an amazing woman. Um, she came to Children's Hospital in 1978 before we even had a division of infectious diseases and she essentially established our department and became a legend there. And since then she has been um, an inspiration and a mentor for generations of pediatric ID physicians at our hospital. Um, and she is really the reason I'm in infectious diseases. She um, has always inspired enthusiasm in us, in those that have been trained under her. She's always expressed how this is the best job ever, and she was right. Um, in fact, I have uh, said in the past at her retirement that she is the single most inspirational person in my life. And of course, that made my wife angry, but it was the truth. So I just had to tell everybody that. Um, there was a particular time during my fellowship when I actually almost quit. Um, and this was because I was involved in a project um, in Nepal where uh, I think I got into a, a situation which uh, uh, was uncomfortable. It was, uh, there was a project going on that uh, made me concerned about uh, various ethical things. I remember emailing uh, Dr. Zimi from an internet cafe in the middle of Kathmandu um, saying, look, looks like I'm going to have to quit fellowship because um, I just can't continue with this project. And uh, she just sent me a quick email back and said, don't worry about it. I've got you, got, got this handled. And when I returned from Nepal, she had already figured out a whole other project for me to do. And thus I was able to finish fellowship and become an infectious disease physician. And so I cannot... Um, I cannot say anything but wonderful things about Dr. Zimi and what she's um, inspired in my life. So I want to thank Dr. Zimi for being This video is to honor Dr. Frank Berkowitz, who we've chosen as the honoree mentor for our table. And all of us have known Frank for different lengths of time, but I've had the pleasure to know him for over 20 years from the time that I was a resident to a fellow and then co-faculty with Frank. And I can honestly say that there is no one who exudes more enthusiasm and love for his job, in particular infectious diseases, than Dr. Berkowitz. He's taught all of us so much, and he is a master clinician. He is like a human CT scanner. He can find things on exam or by history that no one else will find. And we all, one thing that he has taught us all is to take home this one slogan, which is stick a needle in it. And what that means is whenever there is a pustule or an abscess or something that we don't know what it is, we stick a needle in it and take that for culture or cap or whatever we need to. Um, and sometimes he'll take that specimen down to the micro lab himself to gram stain. So he always takes things back down to the basics to always do what's best for our patients. And I think we all have taken that um, as we now practice on our own. It's something that we all take with us every day. His passion for teaching has been shown by numerous awards at Emory. Um, he's trained numerous medical students, residents, fellows, uh, and even us as attendings. He's always there for us, uh, willing to help us and, and, and in difficult cases with, with different diagnoses. And he's taught us a lot about how to deal with others. One of his famous saying is, I don't know why people do what they do. And that's really gone a long way. So we just all want to say, thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Hi, I'm Tempe Chen, and I'm here to honor Dr. Yvonne Bryson. She was my research, research mentor uh, during fellowship at UCLA. And I want to honor her for her enthusiasm and energy around all the perinatal HIV research that we did together 
And one of the things I remember her telling me was, at one point in time, people thought it was crazy that she wanted to give intravenous AZT to mothers uh, who were HIV positive and in labor. And it ended up being something that became the standard of care. So my lesson from Yvonne was to pave your own pathway uh, into research. The other mentor I'd like to honor is Dr. Paul Krogstad. He was our program director uh, during fellowship at UCLA. Paul, I think, is one of the best examples of both a clinician and a researcher, and he's also just a really good human being. Um, I still call him at times uh, for consultations on difficult patients, and he always, has always seen you as a colleague and helps you in not only things infectious diseases, but things in life as well. And it's really tremendously an honor to be able to say that I'm from the UCLA program. Hi, I'm Natasha Ching, and I'm here to honor all of our mentors at UCLA, but specifically I'm honoring my research mentor, Yvonne Bryson, for her never-ending um, innovation in her research and the fact that she always put her patients first in the clinical realm and in the research that she did in pediatric HIV. I'm also honoring Dr. Jim Cherry, who has the greatest faith in every single one of his fellows and attendings throughout his career. We always strive to do our best because we know Dr. Cherry is thinking about us and our careers. And for all of the mentors at UCLA, um, I'm grateful for the opportunities that I've had with them as a fellow, as well as a colleague at UCLA and beyond. Thank you for your mentoring. Hi, we're honoring all the UCLA physicians that helped us as fellows. Dr. Jim Cherry, Dr. Yvonne Bryson, Dr. Paul Krogstad, Dr. Karen Nielsen, and Dr. Jaime DeVille. Thank you for your mentoring and for all your guidance as we've gone on into our careers. All right, hi, I'm Robbie Javeri. Uh, today I'd like to honor one of my mentors during fellowship, Paul Krogstad. Uh, one of the lessons that I learned from Paul early on that I still carry with me during my career is his habits of ongoing learning and really modeling the growth mindset. I vividly remember as a fellow early on him coming on service and saying, you know what, I, I'm not sure I know this topic quite as well as I used to or that I know it and he would go back to the textbooks or pull some of the latest papers to really refresh his memory to model for me the kinds of habits that I think are really most important in an academic position. Uh, it's something that I still care with me every day and actually on a recent phone call I remember reminding him of this and told him that um, it was something that I picked up from him and, and uh, I hope he was pleased about it. So I'm, I'm really happy to, to help honor him today. Hi, we're here to honor Christopher Harrison. My name is Doug Swanson. I'm Jennifer Schuster. And I'm Barbara Prabhud, and we're at Children's Mercy Hospital with Dr. Harrison, um, where we met Dr. Harrison, at least myself. He's been a wonderful uh, mentor and colleague with the enthusiasm for teaching and a great insight into scientific knowledge, and he's just been uh, a great person to help uh, motivate ourselves. Whenever a young faculty comes into the division, I feel like Chris is always trying to make sure that he connects with people and tries to figure out if they have sorted out what they want to do in life and what kind of path they want to take and try to take them under their wing. And I personally at least can remember when I interviewed at Children's Mercy Hospital, which was uh, my first job at a fellowship, one of the main reasons I came to Children's Mercy was because of Chris Harrison. And I clearly remember my interview with him and how um, encouraging he was and how he made me feel very comfortable and that I would have a career there. And throughout the eight years that I've been there, he has definitely um, pushed to make sure that I find my way in life and I think I would not be where I am right now if it wasn't for him. And Chris has the wisdom of navigating systems and knowing how to get things done and talking to people and knowing who to call for exactly what you need, which as a junior faculty could take me days and weeks and months. And Chris knows exactly who that person is that needs to pick up the phone and respond. And he is excellent at doing that. 
I think the other little known Chris thing that I would bring up is Chris, Chris can quote movies. Um, probably like nobody knows, so Chris can quote Mean Girls better than any teenager that I've ever met. Um, and a whole plethora of like 1980s movies. Um, but he has, in addition to his research brain, he has um, an amazing pop culture brain, I think. He's just, agree. <laughs> he's just a great person who is very passionate and he's got a wonderful sense of humor and he's just been great to work with. And I think uh, one more thing I want to say is every time I've traveled to go to meetings, investigator meetings, or I run across people in ID anywhere else, somebody always has a Chris Harrison story to tell that makes them smile and uh, I think we all do uh, Children's Mercy as well. So he doesn't get, take himself very seriously, which we love about him. And is, he's just always been very approachable to all of us. I think that's one of the things I have appreciated the most about him. Definitely. Yep. So thank you, Chris. Thanks. Thanks Hi, Chris. I'm Natasha Lassa. I'm an associate professor at Vanderbilt University Medical Center and I've been there since 2001. And on purpose came there to train under Dr. Katherine Edwards, which we all know as Kathy Edwards, not only has she been my mentor, but she's been an academic mother, um, also not only to me, but to many people in this room, and we're all grateful for her mentorship, and she's been an amazing role model. We love you, Kathy. Hi, I'm Roberta DeBiase from Children's National in Washington, D.C., and I am honoring Mimi Glaudet, who was my division chief when I was a fellow at University of Colorado and Children's Hospital. Of Denver. She has been a wonderful mentor to me throughout my career from the very beginning up until current day. And there's not a day that doesn't go by that I don't ask myself, what would Mimi do in this situation? So thanks. So, and I'm honoring Mimi Gaudet as my mentor. Mimi and I first bonded when I was a chief resident and she was a pediatric program director. We bonded over red hair, Kawasaki disease, and chocolate, not necessarily in that order. For Mimi, chocolate is always number one. Mimi is such a gifted educator, researcher, and clinician, and she has touched hundreds if not thousands of trainees and faculty over the course of her 35 years with her mentoring. She's also the ideal role model for physicians in medicine to show that you can have a successful career as a pediatric infectious disease doctor and balance your family life. Thank you so much, Mimi, for My name is Alpana Wagmar. I'm here to honor Dr. Jan England. Jan, I wanted to say thank you for your mentorship over the past several years. Uh, I really look up to you and I appreciate all your time and effort and advice. Um, and it's been a fantastic uh, journey with you thus far. And I hope um, we can continue to work together for many years into the future. Hello, thank my you. name is Andy Shane and I'm here to honor Larry Pickering, who has been my mentor for the past 14 years. Larry is sort of a professional father to me. Uh, he's provided me with a lot of guidance, both professionally and personally. And although I am here as a single person, I represent a whole cadre of fellows, residents, and medical students who Larry has inspired in his career. He is so relaxed when he interacts with us and has this amazing way of giving you his entire attention. He also has a tremendous number of stories to tell that help to illustrate a very pertinent point that he's trying to exhibit as he mentors individuals. One of the situations where Larry was very helpful was in a seven-year process where we worked on the IDSA diarrhea guidelines together. And as you can imagine, with a group of individuals with lots of different opinions, we had some challenges building consensus. And Larry, in his wonderful, politically correct, uh, very humorous way, was able to make some suggestions to help me bring some of the individuals together so that we could reach a consensus that everybody agreed upon. It's situations like this that make Larry such a tremendous mentor and somebody that is revered by myself and fellows and residents alike. Uh, so my name is Ravi Jaberi. I'd like to honor one of my fellowship mentors, Dr. Jim Cherry. Um, one of the lessons that I took from Jim is just the idea that um, at any stage throughout your career, no matter how established you are as an investigator, there's always something more you can do. Uh, I remember during my second year of fellowship, uh, Jim took a sabbatical. Uh, and during that time, despite all the things that he's done in the field, he decided he was gonna go to a lab in England, uh, Cambridge, and learn how to do PCR for uh, pertussis. 
um, to really understand the organism better and see what else he could add to the field. And, and again, I was really impressed by the idea that he felt he wanted to still do more for the field. And so that's a lesson that was really powerful for me, and I'd like to thank him for demonstrating that for me. Hi, we're the uh, ID group from Indiana University, and our mentor that we're honoring is Dr. John Christensen. My name is John Manilor. I'm on faculty at Riley Hospital for Children. I first met Dr. Christensen as a medical student and have since been uh, now on faculty for six years. And he has been a tremendous advocate for me and has been a role model and has built my library and has been a defender uh, for me in many, many circumstances. And for that, JC, I'm so thankful. I, I'm Samina Bumbra. I'm one of the second year Kids ID fellows at Riley. And JC, I mean, he's an amazing guy. I don't know where to start. Um, he helped direct me towards global health when I was a resident and really haven't looked back since. I could th name a thousand other circumstances that he's been awesome at, including his dog Money Penny also was awesome at. <laughs> but I won't, I won't bore you guys with it because um, he wouldn't stop. Thanks, JC. My name is Jack Snyder. I'm one of the third year med peds uh, adult or ID fellows. I first met JC when I was a third year resident um, on the ID clinical service. And I think what I was drawn to the most um, was his ability to connect with families and connect with everybody on the team. On top of that too, his passion for the field um, was just contagious. And because of him, I chose to do a combined um, adult and I, or adult pediatric fellowship. Um, he was a huge advocate for me um, trailblazing that uh, new direction, at least within our department. So um, to him, I owe him so much, um, not just professionally, but personally too. So thanks, JC. My name is Lindsay. I'm one of the second year pediatric infectious disease fellows. Um, it's hard to pinpoint one thing that JC is good at because he's good at everything. Um, the one thing I do appreciate the most is that he can establish rapport with a patient's family within like one minute, which is an art and a skill. Um, he's also like a second dad to us as fellows. I feel like he always just takes good care of us. He always has a Diet Coke for me. Um, and he always really cares about us. And so we really appreciate that. And we love you, JC. Thank you. My name is Hiba Shihab, one of the third year uh, Pete's ID fellows. Um, I've known Dr. Christensen ever since seven years ago. And um, I was doing an observership at Riley Hospital in preparation to go for residency. And he was one of the people who supported me most during residency and then I came to fellowship. So there are no words really to express how much um, I owe to this person. And um, he's really an inspiration and a role model for all of us, as everybody said, with his um, passion for teaching, his um, humanity and with patients and families. He really taught us a lot um, other, in addition to his being a reference for all of us, really to faculty and to fellows in terms of education. So um, there are really no words to express what I want to say, but um, thank you, Dr. Christensen, for everything. And I'm Tom Fox. I'm one of the faculty at uh, Indiana University, and uh, I started in 2012, and uh, since that time, John has really been uh, a key mentor for me in all aspects of my career. I was my first position out of fellowship, and um, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't be where I am now without him. And he, He's such a personable guy, has an open door policy. I come to him. He's one of the first people I come to for really any problem. He's, a, he's an amazing clinician, amazing person, um, but also well-rounded with other areas, including research and ed education. So thanks, John, for everything you do. Thank you. We love you. <laughs> My name is Angela Myers, and I'm here to honor Mary Ann Jackson. I've known her for nearly 20 years since I was um, a, first a student and then a resident fellow and now faculty at Children's Mercy in Kansas City. One of the things that she does best uh, for her mentees is she really promotes them outside of the institution um, and helps them find you know, niches nationally and um, really helps people's professional development in that way. I'm Jen Goldman. I'm honoring Mary Ann Jackson as well. And I met Mary Ann when I was a fourth year medical student, and she was the first ID attendee and I rounded with. And after a week of spending time with her on service, I remember two things distinctly that I came away with. That she is an amazing diagnostician, and that I was committing my future to infectious diseases because of her. I'm Bill Muller. 
I'm Angie Campbell. And we are getting a table to honor Jan England. So uh, I wanted to tell a story about Jan because I think it really, um, it says to me the kind of role model she was for me at least. Um, Angie and I were fellows together and we started at the same time and Angie will talk about Jan as a mentor but I think Jan as a professional really I think set the stage for me when we were first year fellows and neither one of us um, had family in Seattle and she invited the both of us to have Thanksgiving dinner at her house. And I thought, you know, that just epitomized for me how um, much humanism comes to the practice of medicine, how to care for other people, even when they're not your patients. And at the same time, during that dinner, she um, took a phone call regarding a patient, and she spent about 15 minutes talking about a patient who's an expert in the country. So it just, I think, reiterates to me how um, much of a profession medicine is, and I thought she was just a great model in that uh, particular example. So I wrote something, and I may look down a little bit at it, but um, right, like Bill said, so Jan was my um, mentor all through fellowship, and from the very beginning when I met her, I was excited to work with her. And she was really my first example um, of a researcher who did clinical research uh, in the Pediatric Disease Division in Seattle, um, and she had been doing it well long before she came to Seattle. Um, and she, she asked and answered relevant questions about respiratory viruses, and I wanted to train to be like that. So I, was, um, I really went back to Seattle to work with Jan. Um, and uh, one of the questions we had been asked to think about was a tricky situation um, and how your mentor handled that. And I think that the fact that I was even able to go to Seattle uh, to be a fellow was the tricky situation that I thought of because um, I, I really owe that um, uh, in a huge part to Jan, um, because I went uh, and was a fellow outside of the T32 training grant, meaning that I didn't do basic or translational research, and that Jan went to bat for me from the very beginning uh, to secure some initial funding for me to do clinical research. Uh, and so having someone who believed in me like that um, was really uh, powerful. Uh, and I remember that Thanksgiving too, and one of the things I had written that sort of uh, stood out for me, so many things stand out, her passion for the kids she cared for, and, um, uh, and yet the other thing I wrote above that was just how much she, um, how much she cared about everyone, the kids on her service, uh, the kids who participated in her research studies, and then about all her mentees, so those, those she trained like officially, like me, um, but also other Peds ID fellows that she inspired, uh, and also just, just a lot of other people around her that uh, um, she managed to inspire and support without being their formal mentor. And so I, I, um, I, I really have always desired to try to be so generous with my time as Jan was, and I, I don't think I've achieved it, but, uh, but somehow she seems to have unlimited time for, for other people. In, in the COSAIR Charities Fellowship in Pediatric Infectious Diseases at the University of Louisville was established in 1994 and Gary Marshall was the first fellowship director. Since that time, he's trained seven fellows and one pediatric ID nurse practitioner. On the occasion of Gary giving the Plotkin lecture, we all wanted to come together to honor him. I'm Chris Bryant. I'm Victoria Stadler. I'm Liz Rustano. And I'm Penny Heaton. We are also representing the other fellows Andrew Campbell, Robin Schmucker, and Robin Livingston, as well as Christy Shelton, because they couldn't be here today. So we were asked to describe how Gary conveys to us his enthusiasm for pediatric ID. Penny? Well, I would say he conveyed his enthusiasm for pediatric ID by starting the fellowship. For you. <laughs> for me, <laughs> yes. So I was at the end of my residency. Uh, I really wanted to do a pediatric infectious disease fellowship, uh, but uh, Louisville did not have a program at that time. And I could not leave Louisville because of family reasons. My mother was ill. So I was distraught, didn't know what I was going to do. And one day Gary called me in his office and he said, guess what? We have the funding for the fellowship and he invited me to be the first Cozair Charities Fellow in Pediatric Infectious Diseases. So I was just excited. Victoria? So I have the privilege of working with Dr. Marshall, the boss, um, to this day. And 
he comes into work every day telling us and reminding us that we have the best job in the world. Let's, well, he has cultivated, cultivated a culture of uh, inquisition and curiosity with pediatric infectious disease, and his love for pediatric infectious diseases shows um, through everything that he does. We were also asked to describe how Gary has helped us through a difficult situation. So I can't um, think of a very specific situation right now, but um, I can tell you that I've come to him with many different situations and he uh, always reminds me that I need to stop worrying and just be logical. It's very Penny, you had a thought. I did, yes. Uh, I remember when we had to tell the parents of a six-week-old child that had several infections that she had HIV. This was a couple that were college sweethearts. They had only been married two years. They were starting their family, and they had no idea that they were infected. I remember Gary sitting down and, and with me, and we told the parents, and we sat there with them for almost an hour while we basically just sobbed and cried. And it was an incredible experience. And Gary, at that point, he wasn't just their doctor, but he was their confident, confidant, he was their friend, and he helped them uh, for years to come. So um, they did lose their daughter, but he uh, you know, got them uh, connected to an infectious disease doctor in town, they got treated, they've since had children who are uninfected and healthy, and they've become big advocates telling their story everywhere. And um, that's something, uh, seeing that example is something that's just uh, been a part of me my whole life. You know, Gary has encouraged many of the fellows to call him Yoda. Many of us have over the years. And I'm reminded of a Yoda quote from episode three. And Yoda said, in a dark place we find ourselves and a little knowledge will light our way. And that's really what I think about with your story. We sometimes meet families on the very worst day of their lives when all the medical care in the world isn't going to change the outcome despite our best efforts. But Gary always says, information, knowledge will help the family cope. And so Gary, we just want to say collectively, we love you, um, we are here to honor you, and we thank you for training us. I guess we would all say, well, well trained. trained. Hi, I'm Robbie Javeri. Uh, in May of 2017, Dr. Sam Katz celebrated his 90th birthday. Many Pitts members know Sam and know that he is a giant in our field. Sam was involved in the development of the measles vaccine and has been a tireless advocate for vaccines for many decades. Many Pitts members also know that Sam is a humble giant that has never treated people with an air of condescension. He is often the first person to notice an accomplishment or significant life change. I have been fortunate enough to work with Sam and enjoy his warm personality, generous spirit, and wealth of knowledge. I have watched him closely and tried hard to absorb the lessons of how to conduct myself in a manner that is honorable, respectful, and impactful. I am truly privileged to call him my friend. In honor of his landmark birthday, I asked Sam if it would be okay to make a donation in his honor to Pitts. I also asked if he wouldn't mind if I encouraged others to do so. He said yes to both. I would ask that you consider honoring one of your mentors or role models that has contributed to your personal or professional development over the years by taking a moment to support Pitts Foundation with a gift in his or her honor. Thanks to all of you for considering this, and thanks to Sam for everything he has done for me and for others, and that he will continue.